been to almost every decade, seen history take place, travelled to almost every part of the world. A legend is born, and his name is Dr. Traveller. Hi there, and welcome. Join me on a journey you will never forget. Today, we are in the city of Manchester, the birthplace of the train, the computer, and the bouncing bomb. And you will be looking back at the history of a place that was known as Salford Docks, learning about a bomb that redesigned the west of Manchester, and also looking at a place that was used in World War II. Let's do some travelling! Piccadilly Gardens could be said to be the central area of Manchester and the most vital part of the city, including bus and tram stations, transporting workers and shoppers alike all around the town and even as far as the famous Trafford Centre. Piccadilly Gardens is also a very popular place for tourists and their cameras. From 1755 until 1910, the site of Piccadilly Gardens was occupied by the Manchester Royal Infirmary, which was donated by a Lord of the Manor, and it was once called Door Poles. In 1940, the Germans targeted Manchester. Bomb shelters were built across the city and here in Piccadilly Gardens, but despite all the precautions, there was still tremendous damage and destruction in what became known as the Manchester Blitz. You learn something new every day, I bet you never knew that under where you go to sunbathe and chill out in the summer was a bomb shelter. Piccadilly Gardens is now the largest open central space in Manchester. Anyway, enough of 1943. Back to 2010 we go. Well, it's, it's a nice open space, but I prefer it with a few flowers like they used to have. Ah, oh, it's all right. Nice open area. I mean, it's a nice place to come chill out, isn't it? Uh, not very keen, like them the other way. Nothing really. It's nice in the summer though when the fountains van, that's it really, but nothing more. We're now at one of the first and largest urban regeneration projects in the United Kingdom. Behind me, Media City UK, the new home to the BBC in the north. Its first industrial city. In the 1700s, it sparked an industrial revolution in England with its produce of cotton, amongst other things. It's a centre of the arts, the media, business and, of course, sport. As you probably don't need to be told, Manchester isn't a coastal city and doesn't have a natural link to the sea. And it just so happens that the nearest dock just happens to be Liverpool. And this is where the rivalry begins as Liverpool started to tax the imports and exports of Manchester's textile industry. Obviously, Manchester businessmen were not happy. So they created the Manchester Ship Canal. It was designed by James Sterling and Michael Wilford. So, as you can see, football's not the only reason for rivalry between Manchester and Liverpool. It's nearly 14 years after the IRA bombed Manchester. And everyone looks really happy. It seems like a distant memory. But let's have a look at what really happened that day. For years and years, the violence in Northern Ireland was in Northern Ireland. It was either in Belfast or, or Derry. And it was essentially Catholics on Protestants. And by 75, it had become deeply sectarian stuff, so that they literally went outside of their district and shot anyone in the street on the assumption that they belonged to the rival community. But this wasn't working, because no matter how long it went on for, uh, the British government didn't do anything. And eventually they came up with the policy of bringing the violence to the mainland, as it were.
It can't be said that the bombing was a good thing, although it did cause an increase in development of the city. Every cloud has a silver lining, eh? I hope you enjoyed the show and possibly learned something. This has been the history of Manchester. I've been Dr. Traveller and you've been fabulous. See you on the other side or in another city for another history lesson.